forever. Dog. Welcome to the Real View. This week we discuss gender reveal parties, our favorite queer cinema, and what it means to be a good cop. But first, let's go over listeners' opinions on queer legacy questions from last week. Where's the hottest spot to have public sex? At Adid Wive, Adid Wive, I don't know, girl, said definitely right in front of anti LGBT protests. I agree. Wow. <laughs> right in I front of Fred Phelps. Right in front of the Westboro Baptist <laughs> Church. Mm-hmm. On the opposite end of the spectrum, we have at bottoms for Trump says, how about y'all have sex in the bed like normal human beings? Bottoms for Trump. Okay. This is my alt account. Find us, Chester. Bottoms. (laughs) This is actually my primary account. My Chester Lockhart is my alt account. So Okay. Our guest today is not only a star of stage and screen, but also her picture is next to the word ally in the dictionary. Reading Our Minds for Over a Decade, the creator and star of Difficult People, the host of the new podcast, Double Threat. Please welcome Julie Klausner. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. What a gorgeous introduction. I'm going to have to start requiring that people (laughs) top it. Yeah, yeah. So put it in well, contract. You've come to the right podcast <laughs> if you're doing for topping. We are okay. talking about topping, topping this Thank week. Thank God. So. <laughs> it's about time. I feel like it's about time we have an honest conversation. With about Julie Klausner about topping. topping. With Julie Klausner, yeah. <laughs> I feel like we've run the spectrum now from bottoms for Trump all the way to Julie Klausner. Tops for I'm Julie ready. Klausner. I'm ready. I'm Tops ready. Julie Klausner. All right. Now, Julie, we are living in strange and unprecedented times. So what are you doing to get through the day-to-day right now? Right now, eBay, yes. watching Columbo. Oh, okay. Um, thinking about doing a new eyeliner, but not. Oh, um, <laughs> did, <laughs> rearranging did you... things and then putting them back to where they were. Just a lot of <laughs> avoidance. A lot of avoidance. Did you paint your house or is I, that been I, painted? My amazing friend Stephen Hamill is a genius artist and he and I collaborate on stuff and he G- painted my gorgeous. apartment. Gorgeous. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Fabulous. Happy brilliant. bisexual month with that background. <laughs> yeah, look at that bisexual wall. You can go in one way, you can come out the other way. It Absolutely. don't matter. It's the hallway. Absolutely. What did you do for Labor Day? Um... I what did I do for Labor Day? You go first and I'll try to remember. Well, me <laughs> and just a small group of a diverse 75 Don't gay do- white men um got together on a private island and it wasn't um, a private island. Negative was, all tested multiple it was times. Negative Tulum, all tested multiple times. Mexico, and can I tell you guys the hottest, weirdest, I guess just most serendipitous tea? I know one of the guys. Not like, oh, I kind of know him like. No, 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 no. One of the so muscle you're not dummies. Boots? No, but well, you said no, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, way. not biblically, <laughs> but oh. my friend, my friend has definitely seen him, and he number one, the way he described sex with him, he was like, "Man, I've never seen someone so lazy and like not flexible." Oh! So that's. <laughs> You got to be one or the other. If you're going to lay there, the ankles need to be by the ears. That's yeah. the first thing. The second a thing struggle. is he he is a bottom for Trump, coincidentally. <gasps> he's a loud, he spoke them up last week. He's a dumb, loud, brunette boy from Alabama. And I won't say his name on here, Nick. But what happens is Which that. Which one is that? Let me look at the photo. He's the one in the blue Speedo with the brunette. He's got a great chest, but Wait, nothing else. He's got nothing but rocks up here. I swear to God. He mm-hmm. has a good job lives in a place where he doesn't have to see anyone who doesn't look like him, that doesn't have the same body fat percentage or can do as much on bench press. And his dumb ass got tagged in all these photos. You understand how funny it is to see people partying like in Mexico, just being the worst version of Americans yes. online. Wait it's a minute, so bitch, bad. I had a friend that went, let me check and see. See, see the photo. Monique. Chester, send me the photo. <laughs> I had a friend who went. <laughs> I'm trying to find the photo, too. What is the guy's name? Danny, Nick. what is his name? Newman. Danny Newman. From Danny The Walking Dead. The, 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 the gays are running around from Fire Island Pines to Tullum. We just we don't stop. I just have to say, no offense to Bottoms, I self-identify as a bossy bottom, but anyone who supports Trump is a 
is a bottom for Trump because they're getting <laughs> fucked. Well, I Ooh, mean, and one, not Julia. in the. It's like in no the lube. worst way possible. Zero not lube. no lube. It's stinky. Sandy. He, yeah, it, he doesn't the even. The mattress is on the floor. He doesn't There's even come. Oh yes. <laughs> I um I went can't. to Palm Springs, though I did actually do something, so that was nice. <laughs> Negative tested multiple times. Negative or... tested multiple times. <laughs> okay. Um, ran into Mr. Billy, uh, your good oh. friend. Um, and we we discussed Madonna's new movie, and I really wanted to see yeah, the screenplay. What... I have to get your thoughts on this. Oh, I can't because, wait. I mean, it is like every time I see Diablo in those poor Instagram yes. videos, yes. it looks like she's raising a child or something. Right. And it looks like she's blinking and you're like, are you doing EDMR or are you blinking SOS? But either way, we're going to send authorities over get and rescue her you. out of there. I know. I I, lo- I saw on Madonna's Instagram something like hashtag screenplay. And I thought two things. Yes. First of all, obviously the new Orson Welles is right around the corner. And second of all, how is Madonna doing more writing than I? I am. How is she more productive than me? That bitch has final draft up and I can barely get through a fucking sketch without having to go to the kitchen for some more bark things. It's like, what do you think her hours are for writing? Because I have to know, it's like, what time does Diablo show up for Madonna to start? And how long does she wait? Oh my God. Julie, what are your, what what bark thin are you? I'm dark chocolate pretzel. (laughs) This Ooh, is the mint. dark chocolate mint. Because okay. here's the thing: if I get the pretzel, I'm never gonna put it down. I'm this, telling you, if, you know if what you I mean, want like to it, trap me, put yes. those under. You all you need is a stick propped up over a cardboard <laughs> box and a string, yes. a trail of those. You got yourself a free J, baby. <laughs> And also, you're like, I know that I'm getting trapped, but I'm still... I'm, oh, 100%. You see I'm, the box. You're just like, I don't care. Speaking of screenplays, Julie, you said you were watching Columbo. Can you tell me, what is the worst show you've watched during quarantine and why? Oh, my God. This is very double threat. We want to know. Like, give us some of the worst. Don't and to do read that someone. If, Julie, you know, and if you... are listening. If you say it, I'll say mine. Because I have a, I have an answer, answer. Every, we should all put ourselves at risk. Okay, oh, I'll, I'll be, be vulnerable. Checks, bitch. <laughs> I'm, at the, I'm at the place where if something's really lousy, I, I turn it off. Is that a bad yes. answer? Like, there's a lot no, of false starts on Netflix where I think, oh, today's going to be the day I finally watch, you know, Zodiac or uh, <laughs> The Wire. Or, and then I end up watching Dating on the Spectrum or love. Uh, that documentary about uh, Nexium I just started and I mm. love. Um, What's next? But uh, I'm trying to think of like a bad. You, you tell me yours. You show okay. me yours. I'll show you mine. There is a category of drama that's recently popped up over the past five years, and it's just called white people being messy. They <laughs> used to be called soap operas, and they would air during the day. But apparently, if you put them on premium networks at night for an hour, they're dramas. So my boyfriend is obsessed with Showtime's The Affair. And if you don't oh, know, what yeah. happens is somebody cheated, or two people cheated in Montauk. And imagine be mm-hmm. like, this could be a show. <laughs> Cheating in Montauk. <laughs> you cheated in Montauk. Story. If you cheat in Montauk, all that means is you go, oh, it's a bit colder than I thought. That's it. That's the whole story. <laughs> what happens oh, and, in Montauk? Yeah. No what happens in about. Montauk no stays in the Hamptons. <laughs> and because they're like, can you believe that's what the poor people are doing? Like, I don't, it's good. It's cute. But <laughs> people get stabbed. It's, it's a soap opera. And he mm-hmm. refuses to admit that it has so many melodramatic elements. I'm like, all they're missing is someone is Snidely Whiplash tying her to the train tracks. Like, it's oh. just a soap opera. I would <laughs> love if Snidely Whiplash made an appearance on a spinoff of The Affair. <laughs> That's actually my username on Grindr, so. <laughs> it's- Ruth Wilson is an icon. We Ruth love Wilson Ruth. Is ni- okay, um, yes. The a, a redhead we superb. stand. She's the incredible. Is superb. I'm not saying <clears throat> the mastery of the craft isn't there. No, but, but it's like, why would this be five seasons? It's one, They cheated one time. <laughs> it's like, my God, you're really pulling at strings here. It's Listen, I've cheated twice during this podcast. You don't have to be. <laughs> so, Julie. We don't look. see him below the, the, we don't see him below the chest. Anything could yeah. be happening uh-uh. below Chill the out. chest let's, on Jay's let's screen. Tea. Thank you. Oh, oh, I thought you liked the people who take theirs out. <laughs> <laughs> Ch- okay. Jay's cheek. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> Julie, we know that you're a diehard Broadway fan. When Broadway comes back, what's the number one musical you want to go see? Well, one that I star in, Monique, next to you. I think we should Ooh. do Chicago. Ooh. I, I think you'd be an amazing Velma. Yes. Lovely. Ooh. Lovely. Be fabulous. Who would um, you be? I'm, I'm heartbroken about Broadway. I don't know when it's coming back, and it, yeah. it makes me very true. anxious. I very, mean, very are, true. are you guys theater fans? Or? Love oh, the yes. Theater. Grew up I, doing it. I really wanted to go see Patty in the new company. Oh, my God. And I didn't a, get a chance oh, to go. And it's like, it's like, am I ever going to get to fucking see this? I'm I so really sad. I really wanted to see that, too. Oh, yeah. 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 Bisexual Joanne slanging that drink. Oh, my <laughs> goodness. Also, Monique, you have a Broadway, you have a Broadway musical single that came out a few episodes ago. The... Oh, Mr. Trump, won't you eat my shit? <laughs> oh, yes. I was just like, could we what sing the a hell? snippet of that? Yes. Off, off, off Broadway. Um, no, I was actually right there. I was just outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You were on Broadway and 29th okay. Street. Right. I was right there on the street, just outside the venue. Um, oh, Mr. Trump, eat my shit. It's a remix because I forgot how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then we would have the crowd go, oh, <laughs> Sopranos. Oh, look at this, right? Shit. Boom. Wow. There we go. And then Chester the has his, uh, his uh, what is it called? That little animatronic. No, what's that? His hologram? Thank you. I was calling it a cyclone <laughs> in my head, bitch. But I was you, like, it's something. You said animatronic like he was a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yeah, it's a small world, bitch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is Hot Tops, where we break down all the latest political, cultural, and queer gossip. Let's get down to it. Our first hot top this week, the winner of Canada's drag race has been crowned. Three cheers for Priyanka. Yes. Monique, what do we think of Priyanka's win? And what did we think of Canada's drag race? Uh, it was really, really cute. We can't wait for next season. Um, <laughs> Priyanka, I'm really happy that it was another person of color. Woo, woo, woo. This is what really did it for me. Because um, I thought Scarlett was going to win. When she said da 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 question da 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 question such as such what's my name I said oh bitch she won right there you heard everybody else's rap and were like she won it was very Shea Kool Aid and like all star I think um Rita Baga really threw in the towel with that alien look why would you for your finale dress like a cyborg it just doesn't feel like a finale moment. Why would you showcase you? There are right. moments yeah. in drag where you have to be like, this is the best drag version of me and the drag I do consistently. I was very happy to see so many people celebrate Priyanka's win. Mm -hmm. And so that means like this year is Shay, Jada, and Priyanka. So mm -hmm. we used Melody, to, there Melody, used to be Melody. a thing. And I, I want to say, who made a joke? Naomi Smalls made a joke about it. The formula to win was be blonde and white and skin tea. Mm -hmm. And now we have three brown girls, two black girls, one brown girl that just won the most important drag competitions on TV this year. So I think that is a good precedent that we're setting. Let's celebrate I mean, that. Let's celebrate that. Mm -hmm. But then we're going to have to get our trans siblings and like get mm -hmm. a big girl well, to win. But I want to I was about to say, Jay, you read my mind because <clears throat> I really want to see a big girl win yes. before I die. Surprisingly, yes. I thought Eureka yeah. was going to snatch. Oh, you did? You know who yeah. I was just crazy about? Not that she's a, necessarily a big girl, but I, I loved Bag of Chips from the UK. Oh, oh I love Bag, bag of Chips. Oh, my she God. She was, Die for what a personality on the, her. The funniest. I and mean, those she was UK so girls funny. are funny. And Hilarious. like mean to her mama, which we don't well, approve that, of. I thought that but was, it was fascinating. Funny. Her and Alaska. Fascinating. Well, that was like some Judy Liza <laughs> shit. Imagine being Liza and then like, surprise, Judy's here. Like, that's a <laughs> situation. She'd be like, what Ouija board did you guys use? That part. Well, also just like, I wish we'd discuss this because this relationship yes. is fucking complicated. complicated. Yes, I don't need also, this, girl. Shout out to the storyline producers that were like, mm -hmm. that was smart. See, I guess that is really fast. I was fascinated watching that because if it was me and my mother... It would have been cut the cameras dead ass. Like my mother, yeah. she does this thing where she grabs you by the ear and I would be levitating if by Dua Lipa. If she's shorter than you, 
Yes. Oh, That's even so better. Funny. Chester, even now better. all I can see is you and your mama as Black China and Tokyo Tony in those outfits. Yes! <laughs> Dead ass. Can- My mother, she speaks perfect English except for when she's mad because she'd be like, oh, Chester. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the mother. I, when they get soft. That's, oh, that's she when gets you very be quiet. Oh, that's, that's breathing is dead. fine. When they get soft, they're about to kill you. Can we bring this up real quick? Did y'all see Holland's Drag Race? I saw, I saw the trailer. Is it, is, it tra- no. is it ready? No. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, for a season one trailer for a first cast, yeah. they look the most polished Yeah, they look ever. incredibly polished. Didn't Thailand look really good, too? Thailand, they were sending them Thailand fire. was amazing. I never yeah. saw They set fire to the rain, girl. <gasps> it, girl, really? it gave everyone no, else around for their money. The rain. That part. Yeah. Uh, I'm not surprised <laughs> so, for the Pond simple the fact that I feel like Asian queens are the fishiest or the prettiest ones, because all they need is lip gloss and a, a, like a 301 lash and a wig, bitch, hit the stage. <laughs> but girl, you, you, and that's the thing is that the bar was all, they didn't have to go up to meet the bar. They, they literally are walking out with like animatronics, Girl. actual full on animatronics, setting themselves mm. on fire, making five outfits in a week. The judges were incredible. I'm so sad it got, and also I'm looking at this uh, cast photo for Holland Drag Race. This is beat. Gorgiana, I wanna say this real quick about Canada's Drag Race. I did mm-hmm. think that the final couple episodes, they got rid of the girls who should have been in the top three. I, okay. Okay. I felt like Jimbo, Jimbo. and Lemon were it, way what? ahead of the game. It was Le- very, it was a strange top three for that's me. A, Lemon, that's a- Lemon has destroyed in New York, which I yeah. know that's not like this, like drag can happen beautifully anywhere, but Lemon will come here yeah, and be like, well, you go have the they move. Say, if I can it's make still it, a big deal. If you if can I make can, it yeah. in New York, you've made it, I think. Yes, absolutely. Lem- it's like, hard to get people out of their houses in New York. Lemon so, made people move on their shows in New York. They're like, well, we gonna let her do two numbers because uh, she good. <laughs> And and Jimbo dead, too was doing something that, that it was close to like Sharon Needle season four almost, where it was always what? avant garde but polished. And she nice. did She brought personality every time. Oh, oh what's this heck? We beef it. We fight it. Uh, I, oh, we don't the have the girls kind of are top. fighting. Uh, polished. <laughs> what look? The look that started the most controversy was trash. The only she only had four good looks: the denim one, the look that she looked like Uncle Fester. Um, mm-hmm. maybe her her entrance look okay, and I think one more. But and the, she the w- twinning, she should have won that challenge. The red latex, she got her girl together. <laughs> you know what I thank God because he all gave us assholes and opinions. Okay. <laughs> Let the church say amen. You know what? I might defer to you on this one, Monique. I might let you. Okay. I might, you know what? I might actually let you have this one. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, because when we cash our check in for reparations, I'm saying that too. <laughs> I'm just, saying, a change on I'm just saying I think Jimbo's going to be on All Stars soon. That's what I'll say. I Do think you that think she's they'll a girl drag- that they'll see again. There's going to yes. be international drag stars? Yes, they yes, have. I mean, they also, Juice oh, really? Box should have stayed, and Lemon should have went home episode one. And also, I know, I, I've heard for sure, for sure, that they're going to bring some of the Brit girls Play back the for tape All Stars. So they hopefully need to. Back. The little Bag-a. Asian girl. Um, um, something Wong. Her. Something Wong. And she looks very something puss. Wong. Sorry, Julie, but she looks something very, very Wong. puss. Something Wong was hilarious and good. You know what? The, okay, so UK, and then we do need to get to the second hot topic. The UK, did the, the only thing I have to say about the UK is the first time I've ever watched a drag competition and been like, oh, so y'all y'all just put this whole show on for the Vivian. Okay, mm-hmm. that's Le- cool. Uh, yes. But yes. y'all, they acted like cool. Vivian was a straight up on the panel. But yes. I know at one point they're like, well, what <laughs> advice do you have for us? How can yeah. we make our show better? Yeah, I expected at the end, executive producer, the Vivi. <laughs> Moving on. So let's get some fucking statistics up in this bitch, okay? Mm-hmm. A new human rights campaign report shows that LGBTQ Americans are the population hardest hit by the coronavirus economically. Are we... Shocked by this. No. no not at all. Reuters reports that queer Americans are 30% more likely than their straight counterparts to have lost their jobs since May. Unfortunately, looking at the effects on the LGBTQ plus people of color, the figures rise. 
44% of queer people of color report having their hours reduced. Black and Latino LGBTQ plus Americans are also 70% more likely to have lost their jobs in the general populace. In addition to the job loss reports, 50% of LGBTQ plus people report taking a pay cut due to economic woes during the pandemic. When looking solely, bitch, this is a lot of info, but I'm giving it to you. When looking <laughs> solely at queer people of color, that number increases by 150 percent. That's insane. Gag. It sometimes feels like we have made so much goddamn progress, but then we look at the hard facts and the numbers and discrimination clearly still feels like a viable business decision being made all over this country. <laughs> and this is a really big question. This is a really heavy. Clearly, we really have shifted things, but I want to open it up to the room. How do we make sure our community is protected during this pandemic and after? And furthermore, how can we continue to fight these injustices and inequities? thoughts I and feelings the first thing we need is another stimulus check because Girl. if you think that 1200 divided by six months is going to get people through you don't understand basic math steve that mnuchin part. larry yeah. uh, larry kudlow it's like the thing that's frustrating is people go oh why are these marginalized groups within marginalized groups even more affected and that's because we're already carrying the weight of mm -hmm. so much mm -hmm. you're talking about a gig economy you're talking about freelance workers you're talking about food service providers you're talking about some people that are essential care workers in all of these spaces that are negatively affected so the term unskilled labor is extremely rude when it comes to the black and brown people that provide you with services that make your life way more comfortable than it would be all the people who work in tech, it's so much easier to say, oh, we can work remotely. A lot of black and brown and queer people who fall in those categories don't have that option. So we need another set of stimulus checks, a few of them. If anything, we need a universal basic income. I think the minimum wage being set at $25 an hour Bad. nationally, or at least $20 nationally, $25 in New York and California, that's what we need to do to help people. The minimum wage hasn't changed. In what, mm -hmm. 10 years? Almost? That's disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's what we should do. Girl, you got us right together. Okay. Vote, 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 vote. Vote, vote, vote. vote, 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 vote. Make sure you have a plan. Make sure you're registered. Make sure you're mailing stuff in. If you need to mail it in, know what you're doing. You know, check, double check, triple check online that you're registered. I and sign that. up to be a poll worker. If you can, if you're young enough, if you if you feel comfortable and if you feel safe doing it, sign up to be a poll worker. A lot of poll workers are over 65. They're in a high-risk group for mm -hmm. coronavirus, COVID-19, and mm -hmm. they don't feel as comfortable doing that job this year. You can get paid to be a poll worker, and you can learn how to do it. They have, um, we'll link some of the resources, but be a poll worker if you can. And I know this is grinders, so some of y'all are already poll workers, but oh! I mean in the political Goodbye. sense. Pick a state, pick a swing state, and and donate mm. and call. Uh, pick a uh, pick a uh, South Carolina and try and get Lindsey Graham out of there. South uh, Carolina. You know, I, gave, I gave money. I gave money to to defeat Lindsey Graham specifically. I don't live in that state, but I want him also, gone. Also, shout gone. out to Amy McGrath in Kentucky. If you want to get Mitch McConnell out of the Senate, she is your gal. She's a veteran. Yep. She works hard for people that don't make millions of dollars. And you want to know something crazy? She looks good with a short haircut and a bomber jacket. And we love a woman <laughs> okay. that can throw hands. We, we have a real Amy chance. McGrath. We have a real chance of taking the Senate back. So even if we lose, yeah. even if the Democrats lose the presidency, but gain the Senate, things can be done. Can a her a poop poo poo yeah. uh, warding off the evil eye god forbid keep going yes forbid. yes yeah yes uh, i'm All just right. saying the senate is super important so make sure that you're helping swing states uh nationally and just senate wise okay so we can still segue into something that i want to discuss in 1998 yes. <laughs> mike pence wrote a letter disparaging a little film called Mulan that he <laughs> thought would ruin the American military and destroy generals in this country. You're joking well, right looks, now. I'm not joking at all. Well, Bitch, look, you're bullshit. Well, I swear to God, look it up. Well, guess what, Sister Mary Mike Pence? Now we got a live action Mulan, and it does cost an additional $30. I don't love that, but we're going to talk about it. How do you guys feel about the fact that this is a $30 release on Disney Plus? It also might change the way we look at movie theaters, this and, I guess, Tenet. Like, how do you guys feel about this being like an additional release on Disney Plus? And well, has I anyone think it seen be, it? I think it should be called Moolah. <laughs> God. That's a good point. Thank you for that, Julia. 
I'll see you guys later. Goodbye. <laughs> I'm one, off. one of <laughs> my one of my friends said it should be called <laughs> Meh Lawn. Is it that is it that bad? It's definitely Has anyone seen it? It definitely doesn't know its audience. Um, it is not for kids or for adults. That's oh, great. Right. So I'm who's it for? So, so I was trying to find exactly what in the middle it's for that house might cats. Be. House cat you leave it on, house cats won't shit in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> it is literally not fun and it's not exciting. Great. No, I mean, honestly, I was super excited because Mulan, the animated one, is actually one of my favorites. And it just, it unfortunately, like all these animated into live action, it it is not ever better. Uh, Lion King, whatever. Trash. Uh, Aladdin <laughs> flop. Trash. Uh, Aladdin Trash. Was Beauty so and the Beast was maybe the best, and it was sucks. And Disagree. Emma doesn't need to be in a movie. Cinderella was cute. I mean, Cinderella was cute. Well, was Cinderella Brandy? had Kate Brandy? Blanchett. That's the only Brandy. good one. The only one we Brandy. should ever talk about. Brandy. And Brandy. Whitney Houston. Brandy. Asian Brandy. Prince. We had Whoopi in that bitch. Yeah. Yeah. And well, he is Jason the Alexander. sexiest Asian Quota. prince I've mm. ever seen. One of my favorite quotes from that movie isn't in the movie. It's behind the scenes. We've all seen it. It's Whitney Houston to Brandy saying, why are you down there? Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) Incredible. Iconic. To to me, um, growing up, first of all, the $30 thing, I watched it with my roommate and my quarantine buddy and his boyfriend. (laughs) So when you think about that. Test it. Ten each. We were te- neg- negative oh, tested. Okay. Small private apartment in and North Brioche. Hollywood. Thank and you. Brioche. Well, Brioche is Chinese, so she actually gets it for free. Um, that's <laughs> part of that. Um, so I think the cost is justified that way because I think most people are going to watch it in a household. Um, to me, um, Mulan was like my favorite thing growing up because I thought my mom was Mulan and I would Aww. like draw a little art and I would be like, that's that's the shit for me. And also just like for its time, it was super, you know, the drag and saving the country. I mean, it was just everything for everyone, I think. And so this one, I will say... The parts that I loved were when you could tell that the Asian team was in charge, like martial arts and cultural Mm -hmm. things like that. And everything else, namely the script for me, I thought was the weakest portion because the actors did great with a very weak script. And who wrote the script? White people. So <laughs> yeah, I think- girl, and she looks just like just weird anyway. Just detached. Just the commercial where she's trying to like bring you into it. I'm, like, mm. <laughs> I'm okay. just like I. So, that, so that was love, it for me. We don't love the live action Mulan. We can always salvage this though. We can talk about our favorite songs from the original Mulan. But we love the new Extina. Uh, we do not reflection. No, it's we do not. Everything. Nope. No, nope. it's why I, her belt why? at the end. I don't she, care. Where's an Asian person singing one. it? Well, she sang the OG, right? But then why is she in that music video with that fox eye makeup? I'm tired of the fox eye trend Ooh. with the makeup. What's Stop the doing that. Eye? Shit. What what fox, that? Eye, fox, fox eye. eye is this Bella Hadid shit where you get your eyes oh. pulled up, and you know oh, when girls geez. on Instagram are always posing like this. Bitch, oh, people on. get made fun of their whole lives for that. My mom, my cousin, I'm oh, tired of it. Christina, thought, wait, 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 why I are you Bella singing this Hadid shit? Got her stuff done. So did uh, Christina get her face done too? You can in the in the in the little music video they released for it. Sorry, I'm heated about this because I'm so do tired it. of white people no, taking like the Asian gig. Why? Why did? Why should? Like, I get it. She's saying the original. The original I thought was better and iconic. And also now 20 years later, you know what? I If you listen to the credits of the movie at the end, the girl who plays Mulan sings Reflection in Chinese at the end. I would have much preferred that. Mm. Or K-pop is such a huge thing right now. Obviously not Chinese. There are a lot of Chinese um, K-pop stars in Korea. Why not have someone else sing it? Why not BTS. have literally any other? No, I don't know about BTS. Why not have Behind any other? Scenes. Not behind the scenes. Oh. I don't know. I love Christina. <laughs> I think Christina is very talented. Lovely gowns, beautiful gowns. Give the gift g- to someone who was born with those eyes. Ooh, I think good Chester note. brings up a very good point. If your yes. entire movie, if your entire movie, your entire marketing campaign is about how representation matters, how are you going to be like, but? Our fourth hot top. A gender reveal party in California. Oh! I love this story. A 10,000 acre wildfire at the same time California hit a record breaking heat wave. No New York, no LA. Where are we all moving to restart society? And how important is the law? No gender reveal parties in our new society. No gender. Period. Period. I think it was. I think it was. Pro- I think it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that goes down in history. Least, that child is gonna be like, bitch. 
Um, you know what I mean? Now we know what the baby's gender is. What is playing? Uh, yeah. Until her, until until <laughs> their gender confirmation party. Hello. What about Hello. that? How about we rebuild a forest for that? <laughs> yeah. How about we, right? It's letting us know that cisgender heteronormative activities Absolutely. are actively destroying the world. Abs- and- there couldn't be a more ham-handed metaphor for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh. imagine, imagine being like, uh, "Is the boy? It's a girl? No, it's a uh, it's FEMA on the way it's to save." F- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, so it's FEMA. It's FEMA. Yes. Yeah, we can tell. I think this is great. Not great that it happened, but at least we can. <laughs> say, you know, like, when straight Republicans or conservatives want to come up and say shit and be like, well, bitch, we didn't start, like, a 10,000 acre wildfire. Like, we out here trying to pay our taxes and vote. Yeah, you no, know Billy Joel, I mean? we didn't start the fire. Come on, boo right. Oh, we Not didn't that. start the fire. <laughs> but bum 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 and dun, 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 Yeah, dun, it, it's dun, insane dun, dun. to me that the, these parties have this is not the first time is what's weird this has been the new in the news the past couple years multiple times gender reveal parties have like killed someone started a fire really yes yes Yes. yeah this is like why are gender reveal parties like scarier than like gay warehouse parties it's like (laughs) like i'm gonna wear i'm gonna wear a bulletproof vest and my baby mama is gonna shoot me and whatever powder comes (laughs) off of the vest is gonna turn either Either blue blue or pink pink. but she's a really good shot so it was a headshot like that's like wait a minute who did that is that real no there was a different one where an explosion there could be like a paintball like a gender reveal paintball and if I, the balls are either pink or that blue would be paint. fun. I my I you know I wanted to be a white couple and for there to be like a gender reveal party and then for them to realize that the baby isn't his like that's what I want. <laughs> that to would see. be gay. <laughs> that I want a gender reveal party and the where we black. find out that the couple <laughs> that isn't dead the and the dad just comes out of a box. <laughs> yeah, that we're just fits. like. I don't know. The gender you are party not needs to be father. like, turns out, you guys, we keeping it. Like, I don't, it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> it's Jay Jordan's. So, uh, <laughs> I was sorry. I was reading some reviews on our podcast, which call us um, screaming children. So I feel like I should just scream <laughs> for the rest of this. Um, Wait a second. They called us young? Okay. I, like, I know. I was oh. like, thank you. Oh my God. Julie, do you read reviews? <laughs> Only I the never good do. ones. Only the good ones. If someone tells me a good one, I'm like, oh, that's nice, but I don't look. That's a healthy attitude. I yeah. want to start reading these out loud on our podcast for, for even more. Yeah, these are pretty but funny. Then, no, someone, because then but, they'll make more because they'll think, oh, I he's know, giving but, us attention. But then yeah, someone is going to be like, make you read something filthy or like slanderous. They're gonna you be know like, what? We should, we should read good reviews every episode. Ooh, <laughs> your mind. And then they'll want to. <laughs> yeah, that your won't mind. seem conceited at all. And then they need to put, yeah, if, no, you put your, <laughs> if you guys leave a good review and put your Venmo in the review, we will read it out loud on the podcast. And my so. Venmo is I am Monique Card. My PayPal <laughs> is two and so is my cash app. Monique Thank you so much. Even okay. looking at us, but she heard Venmo and it was like a Pavlovian response. Ah! She was like, Girl. and my Venmo. It is time for Grinder Hotline. Our lovely listeners have left us questions about sex and dating over voicemail. We're going to play the voicemail live and offer our best advice as screaming children. If you have a sex or dating question, our number is 424-235-4430. That is 424-235-4430. Leave us a voicemail this week and next Thursday, we're going to answer. All right, are y'all ready? Yeah! yeah. Ready. Play the voicemail. Hey, everybody. I'm a huge fan of the podcast. I have a question. So my husband's verse and I'm a top, and I tried bottoming for him, and I hated it. I wonder if I'm just a terrible bottom or if he's a bad top. Or is there oh. even a way to tell? I don't know. But I love you guys, and have a good night. I love him. Aww. So sweet. So well, sweet. Queen of tops, Julie Klausner, is here queen with us. Queen of bottoms. So bossy sh- bottoms, my love. Oh, bossy bottoms. Bossy okay. bottoms. Um, BB. Well, BB king. BB queen. I think one thing, you know... <laughs> If you've only tried it once, yeah. no matter what, that's tough. I mean, I, no one really enjoys bottoming their first time. So if it was actually your first time, I say read a few, you know, tips online and and then go at it again. Give it another shot because it does hurt and it does take getting used to. I would also um, say what I'm concerned about is the judgment of the only options he presented are, am I bad at this or is right. he bad at this? And that's right. just a little 
I, I just feel like that's you're, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. That's a lot of blame. That's a lot of mm-hmm. judgment. Um, it, it's just an experience. It's no one's fault or responsibility. Yes. And I think you might be jumping to a conclusion, maybe in a way that's a little, you know, restrictive and maybe think of it more as like a ongoing experience. And if your husband's verse, I mean, by all means, that's just sort of a way to, you know, take that as a cue to expand your mind and not have to worry about defining everything so much and just say, this is another experience that he and I are trying. But, but I agree that, you know, the first time is tough for, I don't know anybody who had a great time losing their virginity, <laughs> frankly. <laughs> right. It's, you know, it's always Still haven't lost the mine. first time. I love you. Well, it'll I be wish- wonderful when it, Chester's waiting. I right want to talk He's to you about for the my right sexual girl. experiences. She's so like, I was like, Mom, thanks. I just yeah. feel so oh, wonderful. Oh, like, my booty hole. Julie, booty that is beautiful. What you just is. said is all the subtext I got from Jennifer Garner's character in Love, Simon. I like, she didn't say it, but I, I heard it. I thought you were going to say those credit card commercials she does. <laughs> Vin- <laughs> Vin- <laughs> Wait a second. Wait a second. You're Jennifer Garner's dad? <laughs> um, I think... If you are attempting to be the receptive partner, you have to be just that, receptive. I'm in a relationship where I am primarily a top, but I have bottom. And just from a very personal standpoint, you're going to have to take matters into your own fingers, uh, first and foremost. You might have to buy a very, very small starter toy. You also need to engage in a bit more... Uh, analingus at the beginning. Yeah. You have to call it foreplay, but we let's yeah. be specific. Yeah, your equipment. The, um, who's oh, like groceries, as Janae Aiko would say. <laughs> you need to warm up the oven, preheat the oven mm-hmm. uh, beforehand. Your equipment is going to take a little bit more to associate pleasure with anal stimuli than it has in the past because you've just been topping your wonderful and beautifully made husband. So I say, take those baby steps and also be very vocal and not just like oohs and ahs, like say what you like about it. Mm -hmm. Also like figure out what lube works for you. Figure out if you need for it to be like in and stay in for a second. Right, right. Or if right. you can deal with like an in and out burger. Uh if there are like a <laughs> lot of animal style, there are a lot of things that you as the receptive sexual partner are gonna be in control of that now you kinda have to take into account. And so I would you're just, yeah, you're I mean, not I, a bad sorry bottom. to interrupt my friend. Yeah. Sorry. I was just gonna say I love the idea of just sort of you know opening it to play. So maybe there's a night where there's no penetration, but Yep. There's just like ass stuff and say, oh, is that fun? And then that's the night. It's not, it doesn't have to be so goal oriented. Yeah. Yes. I love that. Oh, goal, sex doesn't have to be goal oriented. Or whole <laughs> right oriented. Or whole oriented. I feel like there's pressure. Oriented. I feel like there's so much unnecessary pressure, especially when you're right. bottoming. It's just yes. like if you want to even just explore da 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 it's just like the goal has to be like we're fucking and i go that is a whole lot once again as someone who likes to eat it's just a whole <laughs> lot and i sometimes i'm very envious of women julie like prime example like your man or lover just say for an example like if you were dating some guy right he could take you to taco bell mexican you know whatever you could eat whatever the stranger's food your stumble could bubble guts all day long and still go home and have a great time okay what the option and i just feel like there's such pressure like you know a dude's like hey what are you doing oh i just ordered uber eats cool da, 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 da. are you ready like no bitch i'm not i just told you i just ate a meal it's just yeah. so much unnecessary and i hate it i i just hate it and toys and don't a, get the job done and a top getting to know his bottoming and getting to know his schedule for food and all that stuff is a whole nother component on top of getting to know your whole some specific advice I might give, which I give to young bottoms. Verse King over here. Verse King is that Patty. I like to start doggy style and arch your back as much as you can arch your back. That's going to make it easier to get in. And then as they enter, do one hit of poppers to really relax your body. <laughs> this, is, this is the advice um, that your the health class never gave you. And I prefer Rush because it's a real hit. It takes you out for 10 seconds and he goes in, you're kind of, and then you stabilize 
And then he starts, and then it starts feeling good again. So it kind of takes away the pain of that moment. So that's just a little uh, tip, if you will. <laughs> I so love time tip. weathered the advice. Just I the love tip. how you like you told them to do poppers, but in a way that made me like, he's right. You know what, Patrick, you're right. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is, I've told a lot of new bottoms that this is my kind of secret to when I'm not as warmed up as usual. So I give a lot of young bottoms. That's my specific technique. Yeah, and coming Take out of quarantine, some people ain't going to be warmed up. It's going to be some yeah. cobwebs you're going to have to clear out, Girl. everybody. <laughs> I, haven't, just... I haven't bottomed in 2020. I haven't I'll bottomed in two and a half years. I haven't bottomed in I haven't had in sex in two and a half years. Ain't seen it, ain't touched one, ain't and lived I'm, one. And I'm over it. Girl, I'm me ready. too. Julie, have you ever realized you are the hoe of the podcast? I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> what else is new? What else is new? I'm always the hoe of the podcast. <laughs> Julie said, these poor kids. <laughs> I was, no, me and Julie over here like, oh, let me open you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be quiet until they're done. <laughs> <Take some time. laughs> No, yeah. I mean, I've been safe and trying to respect quarantine. And so there's that aspect yeah, of it. There's the aspect of I'm very picky with my tops. I'm six foot three. I like a certain person you to are? be topping me. I thought you yeah. were as short as hell. I thought you were like <laughs> five, six. That part, bitch. No, I'm really big. I'm 185, what? six, three. Guys. My mind is blown. We have been doing this for months, and I fully Bitch, thought I've never st- you've never seen him standing up. You yeah, never... but even in his close fight, Patrick, photo, get, I'm like, stand up, little. and so we can see you next to something of scale right now. Back up. <laughs> I okay. Let me. Are you too big for this house you're in? It oh, he's on the second like... floor. He's too big for this house. He's too big. Wow. Oh, oh you are tall. My Gag. mind is blown right now. Gag. Girl, if can I saw you, you at the farmer's market, can you, you would be like, you work here, right? Uh, also, yeah. did you get the dick? <laughs> so, Julie, the, the our last <laughs> podcast guest asked me out. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. And he was fine. So, Patrick, did you, did you find somewhere to sit under the Tuscan sun, as it were? <laughs> um... I will say that I have not visited the Tuscan Sun. I've not had the pleasure uh, yet. Okay. See, I feel like that could be very inconspicuous because the reality is you have not been to the Tuscan Sun. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. your location, mm-hmm. geographic. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. could have tasted, you know, some of that olive oil, okay? Some of that. Exactly. Some of that you bread, had appetizer. Whatever. I, I, you guys, I will, girl. I will you guys say I've seen a few olive grapes? branches, but I have not. Oh, now oh, you're telling so his business. Get him back on the podcast. Yeah. 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 Should we have him next week? <laughs> um, okay. So finally, our queer legacy question. These are the questions every group of queer people have fought about over the years. What's the greatest Oscar speech? Who's the best Spice Girl? What's the proper way to douche? We're going to battle that out amongst ourselves, and we want to hear from you. Add us at Grindr and use the hashtag queer legacy, and give us your answer, and we'll read them at the top of the show next week. Okay, this week. If we had to submit an entry to the canon, what film is the best queer film of all time? Of all time? What are there? Is there stuff on in there already? Or is it just if we're starting with a blank slate? I think we're let's go ahead and say we're starting with a blank slate. That's overwhelming. I think I might pass out. This is really hard. This is too big. Is this too big? Yeah, one one choice. I'll I'll do the thing that everyone's scared to do. I'll say the Wizard of Oz. Oh wow. I mean if it's going in the vault, it's already Mm. in the Turner Classic Movies vault. If it's going Mm. in the queer in the if if someone was like, what is the most iconic queer film? And we're using okay. that. Can, can I say this? If you had to choose, if you got just one queer film to show people in space, what what queer life? <laughs> you mean a movie that is say that people has like young gay men or people oh. just like uh, aliens? Yeah. If you got to show aliens a VHS tape of, of what, what gay men are like was. or what queer yeah. people are like, oh, because that that My dogs. You oh, get puppies. one choice. Babies. My puppy, my puppy wants to contribute. She's mad. Well, I'm gonna say, in terms of canon, to yes. introduce a young person who is sort of coming I, out or figuring out what's important culturally, I would say all about Eve. But ooh, if it's a matter ooh. of like, you know, sending a time capsule, a representation of 
of you know what we can do as a as a species, I would say pink flamingos. Oh, Ooh. okay. Ooh. If we're going like what queer people are like, I would say Tu Wang Fu is a yeah. very easy. Mm, that's what I was like, gonna say. It's a do very you, easy. You like that more than Priscilla, Queen of the Desert? Yes. Yes. Oh. Really? Yes. I, and yeah. then, but if we're putting Priscilla in there, don't we have to put the birdcage in there? And then we just that's put, what I, that was wait, the other one. But wait, should we just put in Paris is burning? Yes. Yeah. Oh, because it's a documentary. That's I mean, if we show the aliens and the, and the little mermaid, aliens a film. I want to show them. Paris is burning. I'm gonna pass out. Can we throw the Little Mermaid? <laughs> <laughs> that was okay. my film. We I joke mean. about Naturally. it, but Alan Minkin, we do we don't talk about Hello. it enough. And the documentary just came out. I would have, yeah, which Howard is so Ashman. good too. Ashman, yeah. rest in power. And Ur Ursula is based off divine, uh, divine, divine. divine. So, mm -hmm. and the mermaid thing represents queer. a lot of times a lot of trans people identify with mm -hmm. the whole Ariel mermaid. Da 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 da. So boom. So it's and imagine losing your voice in order. And was it like Hans? Oh, Hans that's Anderson. powerful, Julie. I didn't even think about that. Losing your voice in the middle in of the oh wow! In order to fit in. Well, Ursula says a woman doesn't know how powerful her voice is until she's been silenced in in the song. So that's very like what a ooh, ooh. cutting girl. Let's that's, go back and watch this queer. and break this ooh. down. Um, I see the reason I'm starting to understand why Julie was upset that we choice. have to answer this is because it's impossible. Oh, the impossible with impossible. Naomi Watts. I forgot. We have to add that to the I canon. Hate you. The impossible with Nay. We're adding darling Nay to the canon. Who's um, impossible? Oh my God. Patrick, <laughs> you, I, like, this question, I said Wizard of Oz because I was like, it's a queer film. It's it, mm -hmm. from a. It's, it's a kinda, legacy a, film. It's a it's legacy, a legacy queer film. film. The Wiz it's, and The Wizard of Oz. You have to put both. But see. It, Okay, and the whiz is one of those things where, like, as a black per as a queer person of color, as a black person, when I saw the whiz, I was like, man, I don't really need the whiz. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the minute, the minute you the hear the Munchkin Land, like that scene has always stayed with me. Like, yeah, and like every black girl I know that did theater was like, when I think of home, I was oh, like, okay, girl. we've heard it, we've heard it, we don't need to hear you sing it, we heard it. Jasmine it was Sullivan singing, singing that at eleven. You haven't heard it until you hear me sing it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I well, girl. Not. Actually. You shouldn't have snapped your fingers at that pianist. Have you, you heard Jasmine fast. Sullivan sing it when she was Thank 11 you. years old? Thank yes. you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Bitch. Oh my <gasps> God. Okay. Also, I just want to throw this movie out there. I know that we've. I think if we're talking about queer like legacy and like an example of queer culture and stuff, and talking about our actual experience on Earth. I think Philadelphia is something that's very valid. Wow. Talking about yes. the AIDS crisis and talking about, especially in the mm -hmm. 90s, all of the stigmas associated with that in the workplace and the relationship there, I think is very powerful and it's just really and, well And acted. I do think aliens should know who Denzel Washington is. And that is Tr on period. Trust if we're, me, if Patrick, we're people to they know, they know. They're like, we can't wait Is to this another this one? <laughs> this is kind of educational for me. I really don't like him as an actor, but I think it did show great, uh, what you call it, of, uh, Joie de Vivre. No, it was the movie Range? where um, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Dallas, Dallas Fires. Fires Club. I really oh, no. no. I know. I hate Jared in that. Horrible. I just well, you hate loved Jared all of the stories. <laughs> I loved um, the the like when you. I loved how you saw the lesbians who don't get any kind of play or vis mm -hmm. uh, visibility. Mm -hmm. True. You saw them and how they have always been pillars in the community. Um, how it really was about banding together, even though he mm -hmm. wasn't gay, right? Uh, but you just saw the community and everything. I thought it was super, super like. Wow. I also want to say we need more lesbian films that Very are true. not period pieces. That mm -hmm. part. I yeah, want a could, I want a modern yeah. day lesbian film with some just regular lesbian you want a people. Modern Carol. Well, who's today's Carol? <laughs> yeah. I mean, who's today's oh, Carol? I think uh, okay. Casey Nash is today's Carol. I well, love, but also love, I think that Book Smart was an amazing queer film that came out in the past year for young lesbian and femme identifying. Uh, I don't know that one. Queer Booksmart? people. Book Smart, directed by Olivia Wilde. It's super bad. And I want to say it's better than super bad, but this time it has girls. It's so Ooh. good, so funny. Super bad, the movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I thought confused. you meant it was super bad. bad. I, was I was like, like how no, are you? No, 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 no. Okay. So no. if we're sending a film to a young gay man or an alien, 
book smart. It's decided. no, that's Moonlight. not what I'm saying. I did not sign off on that. I didn't. Say Moonlight. That. That's we a good one. Say, we have to say goodbye to Julie, you guys. This Bye, was Julie. so fun. Bye, Julie, Julie. You're lovely. Oh, a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. What a treat! Please I'm, listen to her new podcast. The feeling Double is mutual. And um, hopefully you'll come back soon to Ra Ra and talk, talk shop. Yeah, and we'll rewatch, rewatch difficult people because people are gonna be like, I'll rewatch, watch it again. Watch All it right, again. It's, watch the, it again. it's the best show Hulu's ever had. Yeah. I agree. The only show Hulu's ever had. <laughs> I if agree with that too. True tea, Patrick, some true stop tea. it! You trying okay. to get us in Excuse trouble? Excuse me. Into the Dark, Midnight Kiss, starring Chester Lockhart was a snap <laughs> on Hulu. Patrick, Thank you so much. Okay. Some of us. Some of us have generals to go to, and when you say <laughs> stuff like that, exactly. Fuck Hulu. They shouldn't have canceled it. Okay, sorry. Hulu. I'm so sorry. Hulu, you are so beautiful, and Julie, you are just you as beautiful are as Hulu. So beautiful. This has been so much fun, but it's time to go now. Thanks for tuning in to the Rear View, and remember to subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. Or you can watch the show on YouTube. Do us a favor, America, and leave a nice review for all the work we do. Bye, y'all. Bye. Bye. Forever. The Rear View has been a joint production between Forever Dog and Grinder, hosted by Patrick Rogers, Monique Hart, Chester Lockhart, and Jay Jordan. Music by Gabe Lopez, engineered and edited by Will Pitts, executive produced by Joe Cilio, Anna Rubinova, Patrick Rogers, Evan Starrett, Brett Boehm, and Alex Ramsey. <laughs>